Hello, this is Alphonse. Welcome to my new video. This lesson we are looking, going to look at the pelvic clock as it was taught by Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais. Uh, so this could be a series of movements. It's not just one simple, it's actually one simple move. It's very simple, but we're going, I could teach it uh, in many lessons. So thanks Isaac for the suggestion. Isaac is uh, one of my new Patreons. We've been in contact for a long time via email and he now supports me on Patreon. Thank you for that. And that was his question, how to make the spine more flexible. And of course, it's not just about flexibility, but about organization and what else is connected to the spine. And that's like the whole, the whole being is connected to the spine. How, how to make the whole thing more flexible? Good question. Uh, I love this lesson myself and it will be very, very simple. So just sit, come to sit. Um, I myself, I just occupied this room for now. Um, I put a mat on the floor, so, so you probably a mat and just a space where you have your own time just to follow along. So it's, the instructions are very simple. I give you the instructions up front in case you don't want to follow the video. <laughs> so please come to sit on the floor, we will start right away. Uh, I need to lean against my hands, which is actually maybe quite good for, for the spine, for the lower back, maybe. So that's, that's going to be our starting position, somehow sitting on the floor. You can sit crossed legs if you like, you can sit with your, the soles of your feet together. Uh, it's pretty open, pretty open. And the first movement, as I already said, is just lowering the head. Um, pretty simple thing, right? Just uh, bring the head a little bit forward. But if you're not like, if you're not like super, super flexible, so if you're super, super flexible, you will, uh, you will be able to think about what will you move because you have so many movement possibilities and on the other hand if you're like super not flexible it's like what well, can i move <laughs> how, how can i even lower my head <laughs> so in whatever leaning in whatever sitting position you are just lower lower your head and bring it up again to the horizon and <clears throat> let your let your legs if that your knees if that's possible just hang to the outside just let them hang and lower your head lower your head and bring it up again slowly slowly and we so that's not a you won't get a reward after a hundred repetitions or do you maybe you do maybe we get a reward but it's not about the repetitions it's about how do you say the the way is the goal the there's no maybe there's a goal yes maybe we're doing this to become a little bit more flexible maybe to ease lower back pain maybe to open up the hip joints um, so when Moshe Felden tries was teaching, I yeah, just continue this, this lesson in Amherst, 1980, 40 years ago, almost 40 years ago. He was talking a lot and he was so excited about this lesson. He couldn't stop talking um, for what he discovered and how he could use these discoveries in his private practice. Because there's a remarkable, or it was a remarkable, it was like a milestone, I guess, in, in movement history, uh, his, his discovery in this lesson. I will talk about it a bit later, but uh, for now, just continue with lowering, 
lowering your head and, and see how, how you even do that, how you can lower the head and then bring it back up again. And to give you some clues, like your head, what is your head? Do you think of your nose when you lower your head or do you think of your forehead, your eyebrows, your chin? What do you think of when you think of your head, of lowering your head or do you think of the back of your head? The back of your head coming closer to the floor? How's that for a body image? The back of the head coming closer to the floor? It's, it's true, the back of the head comes closer to the floor if you lower the head to the floor, like because the whole thing comes closer to the floor, doesn't it? And um, So when you think of different parts of yourself, you will direct yourself in different ways. So when we shift consciousness around, or awareness around in our body, this will alter the way we perceive movement and the way we actually act. Mm, yeah, just try to have your knees hanging, hanging to the sides. And of course, the shoulders might participate. Should, probably. And then after lowering your head, you always bring it back to, to where? Where is it? Where is the top position? And then also a little bit backwards. Backwards, so you bring the head, the back of your head backwards. Or <laughs> to make it awkward, you bring the nose back, backwards towards the floor. So, you know... <laughs> That doesn't make any sense. The back of the head, but don't like, don't overextend your head. I think of your chest, you also need to move your chest. You need to move your chest bone, chest bone backwards. So we start with the top of the torso. Alliteration. The head forwards and backwards and let the shoulders participate and your Maybe this can loosen up, like, uh, I did this yesterday for, I think like 40 minutes, then a two hours break, and then another 40 minutes, I guess. And it's, it's changed considerably. And it mel melted, it melted me, definitely melted me melted me to the floor, you will see. So when you're tired on your hands, you don't have to, don't torture yourself. Always uh, try to make yourself comfortable. Comfort first, and then safety and learning. What can we discover in this movement? How can you not make this a repetition, but each movement a new one? A new movement each time. Like, that's, that's, that's a strange thing about us uh, humans uh, in comparison to robots, I guess. Like, every movement is different. There's know the same movements, I think because of the fascia, how the, the fascia inside, the, the, how it works, like these little trees and strings, they separate and come together and This is what we call the epimysium. 
Epimysial fibers are in continuity with the surface of the skin and blend into the hypodermis, as we have already described in our previous film, The Skin Excursion. But they also enter, leave, mix with, combine and penetrate deep into the perimysium, separating the bundles of muscular fibers. It seems obvious, apart from the sheer beauty, which is not negligible, that everything is connected. There is no break in continuity of living matter. There are no sheets of tissue, layers or sublayers arising from nowhere. The epimysium and perimysium are continuous structures. The, the, how it works, like these little trees and strings, they separate and come together and with every movement it's not the same. It's like constantly change underneath your chin, uh, chin, yes, underneath the chin, underneath your skin. You're always changing. It's never the same. Like to, with handwriting, for example, it's hard to write the same word the same exactly the same way. It's almost in, for humans. Like, and you can see it with handwriting. Like when you draw a couple of words that are the same word, all of them will have like nuances of differences for some people more than for others. And the same is of course with, with all movements. It's never the same. There's not that, I mean, can't be the same because it's a, in a different position in time anyways. So, uh, yeah, we can combine these two movements, the head forwards and the head backwards, uh, like sinking the head and, and lifting the head. Yeah, and let more and more of yourself participate. Are we tired already? Do we, do we, do we need to break? Do we need to have a break? Yeah, so if you want to break, just come to lie down on the floor. Let me break with you. Have a break, just lie down on the floor. Jesus. And... Oh. Um, do you lie more flat than usually? Is your spine like more? It should be a very special feeling in the spine. It's like a, a feeling I only get from Feldenkrais. It's like, whoa, 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 loosened up. But it's not just loosened up, it's, it's organized. It's organized towards a movement in, the, in this sense. It's like flexion and extension. But that's a that's bad words. Um, they are so limiting. They are limiting the, the thinking. It's not just flexion and extension. It's not just lowering and lifting the head and bringing the head backwards. It's it's more as you already experienced. Let's let's come back up to to sitting and continue, continue, continue with this with this thing. So second. Second run, our second run together. Mm, yeah, why not? Yeah, you can like, I don't know. You can have you, you, you can have your feet any way you like. Um, but maybe don't have them always the same in the same position. Maybe do variations. So. Let's do the same thing again. Just lower the head. You can have your hands closer to your buttocks. You can have them a little bit further away. You can have your hands further away from each other. Try to break out of habits and try different, different, different positions. Different positions and then just lower your head and lift it. And lower, lo just in your tempo. I'm just speaking for myself, but you you go your you go your your way, your tempo, your your pathways. And 
the more flexibility you have in your spine, of course, the more, the more there's the question, what is lowering of the head, which you bring the head forwards and down, or is it like a curve, or like a curl? Do you like sink your nasal cavities? <laughs> Or the tip of your nose? Do you bring your... Do your ears turn? Do you think of your ears? What, what do you think of when you... When you... Do this movement like... And the spine and the shoulders and... And the chest and the chest bone. The sternum. It can depress. And when you bring your head backwards, the sternum can elevate. It's not... It's not a rigid chest, shouldn't be rigid, it should be flexible. Come up, come up, come up, come up, then you go up and go down. And then let's let's not make let's not waste all day. <laughs> well it's not wasting, it's a wonderful it's a wonderful practice, but let's um, let's do the pelvis thing. So Instead of a pure pelvic tilt, it shouldn't be like shouldn't be a pelvic tilt. It's like extending the spine in a way so that your pelvis can roll forwards and then roll backwards again. So it's called pelvic clock before because people in the in the old times they used to have or rich people they used to have clocks that have a clock face like a circle <laughs> who am i kidding so let's say 12 is in front of us and six is behind of us we're sitting on this clock face and then three o'clock is to the right and nine o'clock is to the left but we're only going to use 12 and six so it's called pelvic clock because we're following the clock face but in this lesson in this first part of maybe a series i don't know um it's just Rolling the pelvis forwards to 12 and backwards to 6 some, somewhere. So, <clears throat> do we have a skeleton? Maybe I will blend in a skeleton, a pelvis. And you can see in, in the lower end of the pelvis there's the two sit bones. Sitbon, nice English name. I like those English names. In German, Sitzbeine. Also makes a lot of sense. I can relate to that. I, it's like Beine, legs, bones, we are sitting on. And they have this shape so we can roll over them. And do you think of this rolling on those sit bones when you, uh, and bring your belly out when you bring your pelvis? Bring your pelvis forward, roll and arch your back of course and bring your head backwards. Let's combine those things, why not? No, don't combine it yet, just let's make it a movement of the pelvis. So the pelvis forwards and backwards. Or do you think of your, like, when you search for bones on both sides, left side and right side, you will find the, the Schaufel, Becken Schaufel, is it Becken Schaufel? What do, do, how do you call this in English? The uh, anterior, superior, what is it? Um, something. And what parts of your pelvis are you feeling, are you thinking of when you roll your pelvis? So let your let your your legs just hang freely. Mm. So this is so this would be a good point in the lesson to have the soles of your feet together. 
instead of having your legs crossed. And roll forwards and backwards. And um, let's take a break, Sh shan't we? Let's come back onto come back onto your back. And just um, observe how you're resting now. And then come back up again to the last part where we combine the first two parts. So come back to sit with the soles of your feet together. Um, lean against your hands if that's still possible. If they are hurting, you could just sit with your hands yeah, on the knees or Somehow, there will be in other lessons, for example, we will do the same thing while leaning on the elbows, but we are not there yet. I want to build this, so you have the idea, you can do that if you want, but uh, I suggest for the last part today, lean against your hands as before, if that still works, you can make some fists, and we combine lowering the head and tilting the pelvis backwards and then rolling the pelvis forwards which means it's arching you're protruding your belly and you're lifting your sternum how far how far do we need to go how little can we move and it's still a movement So, and, and the thing Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais was so crazy excited about, he, he was like, wow, he was, and it is a big discovery. <clears throat> the big discovery is usually you use your legs to, to move the legs. I don't know. <clears throat> when you walk, your torso is stable and the legs are swinging, right? But with this kind of movement, the legs are stationary and the pelvis is rolling around the legs rather than the legs rolling around the pelvis. Does this make sense? Some call it a reversal of distal and proximal. Let me just quickly point that out one more time. So continue what you're doing right now, have your soles of your feet together and lower your head, lift your head, roll your pelvis, do these kind of things while I recap shortly this, the, the principle here that we are using with the hip joints because it's such a big discovery or it was such a big discovery 40, 50, 60 years ago when Moshe Feldenkrais discovered this principle for him at least and for us Feldenkrais practitioners or everybody who bases his or her work on the work of, of this idea, this principle because it works really so, so very nicely. So the idea is this reversal. So for one thing you could either on one hand, on one side you could either not move, hold stiff your torso and move the leg. And the reversal is 
The other way around is you don't move the leg, you hold your leg stiff and move your hip joint, your torso around the leg. You know what I mean? Either you open a window in a house, so the house is still and you open the window, or you hold the window still and move the house around the window. So it's the same movement for the window, but of course, totally different. <laughs> Was that a good example? Uh, I remember Futurama. Do you know the cartoon Futurama? Um, they have this little spaceship and uh, <laughs> and the way the spaceship works is not that the spaceship moves around in in the orbit in, in the universe but the spaceship is still and the universe moves around the nothing is impossible i understand how the engines work now it came to me in a dream the engines don't move the ship at all the ship stays where it is and the engines move the universe around it that's a complete load nothing's a complete load not if you can imagine it that's what being a scientist is all about, right, Professor? <laughs> it's just a TV series. Uh, one example from my private practice um, in, in Austria, my, one of my last clients, she was a woman from Switzerland and I live close to a skiing resort. So, of course, there's not just fun things, but also big accidents. And when they have skiing accidents, of course, they get first intervention and they get very good medical treatment, but some of these accidents don't heal up. And the people who suffer from these accidents for a long time and, and they start to go from therapist to therapist, like, like this woman. And when she came into my practice, actually, she, wasn't, um, she was a difficult client because she was so frustrated, so angered about herself and about the, the skiing and about the therapist. And uh, she was very impatient. <laughs> I, I saw her the first time, but she had like a long journey already. So I, well, she had a shoulder tear, like a, a little bony part from her upper arm bone broke off ripped off together with the muscle and it healed up like the accident was like five months ago and everything was okay it was the, the swelling everything w was gone away but she couldn't move her arm and it was, it was a big problem for her because she's a hairdresser haircut and she needs to move the arm a lot and she was desperate so i did the same thing instead of trying to move her arm like everybody else did except for the aroma therapy and the spiritual cards. <laughs> but, so instead of trying to move her arm, which wasn't possible, which was so painful, I, I moved her torso, her shoulder around her arm. Y you know what I mean? So instead of trying to, to move the arm, which was very painful and nobody could do, not even herself, I, I moved I moved the whole body, I kept the arm still and moved the whole body around the arm, amongst other things, of course, because there needs to be a connection to the whole, to the whole self, to the whole body. But it worked very well. So after one hour, she was a lot better and she was so happy. She, she was crying actually, because all this pain was gone and she, and she then started to work and she came two more times. And, and the problem was, I mean, she couldn't like, raise the arm fully after three sessions, but she could work normally and she works like eight hours, 10 hours a day and, and she, she could do that. So it's a big discovery. So that's, <laughs> this, that's the, the thing. So, and, and now we keep on rolling the pelvis around the legs and see what that does to our hip joints and later what it does to our standing. So continue with the lesson. Tilt the pelvis and <laughs> tilt. tilt the pelvis. Move the spine, lift and lower the head. Put everything together, and I, I can't really observe what you're doing. That's not possible. But uh, you discover you're improving if you continue with this movement and and how you put everything together and how you take everything apart and then put it together. I mean, that's a good good way of saying it. it's like you cleaning an engine like you put, you 
take it apart and put it together. And I think we call it integration. Fancy wording. Okay, so how did this how did this change? How did this develop? How, how long how much time did we spend? Almost half an hour. I think that should be good. Um, let's come to a rest for our last time and see how the spine feels on the floor after these movements, after we spend this time. And you should you should feel you should feel great. <laughs> you should you should feel great lying on the floor now. And I hope this gave you some ideas or inspiration to explore further either these movements and I will add in a lot more movements later, hopefully. Let's see how lazy I am or productive I'm going to be. Because this is just like the first the first part of the pelvic of a pelvic clock series of a of dozens of possibilities. But it's what I wanted to show you, it's, it, we can take time, we can spend time. Spend, spend time doing this and by spending this much time, it, we, we get rewarded. All right, so um, let's see, let's see how, how this feels in standing, shall we? So please come up to stand. Ah, uh -huh. how does this, how is this, how is this in standing? Can you still stand? How's your lower back? How's your shoulders? How do you perceive how you... This should make a big difference, shouldn't it? I feel a big difference. It's marvelous. Uh, talking of marvelous, uh, I think you, by now you know my Patreon channel, where you can support my video productions. Um, I depend on you, my video production depends on you. Um, link in the description. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.